Interesting facts about making energy during exercise. Fact one, your body only runs on Duncan. And by Duncan, I mean the energy molecule, adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. Two, you can't live without ATP. In fact, cyanide causes death by blocking ATP production. Three, you only have enough ATP inside of you for a few seconds of exercise. Four, your cells, including muscle cells, have three systems that recycle used up ATP into new usable ATP. Five, ATP releases energy when its end phosphate is removed, leaving it in a new molecule called ADP, which contains energy, but it's in a form your muscles can't use. Six, but it can be recycled along with phosphate when energy from the food you eat are combined to form a new usable ATP, giving you the energy not only to live, but to survive. Seven, given that our ancestors needed prolonged energy to seek out and track down new food sources, as well as fast energy to avoid becoming food sources themselves, our muscles have three different ways to recycle ATP. Eight, for endurance events, your cells rely on the aerobic system, which requires oxygen to transfer energy from carbs or glucose and fatty acids into new usable ATP. Aerobic energy sustains you during continuous low to moderate aerobic workouts, which operates fastest when burning glucose or its stored form glycogen, which can become depleted after about two hours of exercise. Ten, you can delay fatigue from glycogen depletion in events lasting longer than two hours by carbohydrate loading the week before but not by eating just one large pasta meal the night before. 11, the aerobic system is relatively slow and can't provide energy fast enough for high intensity or heavy resistance training workouts. 12, your cells also have fast ATP generating anaerobic systems that aren't slowed down by requiring oxygen and thus provide the rapid energy needed for sprinting and heavy lifting. 13, one of those systems, anaerobic glycolysis, only uses glucose as the energy provider for new ATP during intense exercise lasting one to two minutes, like sprinting 400 meters or running up and down a football or soccer pitch. 14, glycolysis also produces acid, too much of which slows down its ability to produce ATP. But you can extend the one to two minutes by taking acid buffering baking soda about 60 minutes before your workout. 15, the other anaerobic system, the phosphagen or ATP system, runs on a unique energy source called phosphocreatine, which contains energy from glucose or fatty acids, but in an immediately available form. 16, the phosphagen system is the fastest of all three, but it only lasts about 30 seconds, like during an all-out sprint of 200 meters or less. 17, taking the supplement creatine adds more phosphocreatine to your muscles, which allows you to train a little bit harder by completing another rep or two, or by running an interval or sprint a little little bit harder. 18. There are no on-off switches for these three energy systems. They all operate simultaneously, with one providing the majority of energy and the other two playing supportive roles. 19. During exercise and physical activity, your muscles smoothly transition between the three systems, depending upon the intensity of the workout or the required survival skill. 20. Any training program or related supplement needs to be matched to the dominant energy system for a given workout or event. Post any questions you have in the comments section and check out my other energy videos in my energy production playlist on YouTube. As always, matters come for peer-reviewed research.